those are very good presentations, extremely technical. If you're looking for another one like that, probably in the wrong room. <laughs> but um, I, uh, I run Carrier uh, Solutions Marketing for Radware. So I'm actually going to talk about kind of a cross-section of the first two presentations you heard uh, from F5 and then the latest one. But it'll be at probably a couple higher levels. Um, I'm going to approach it from kind of what we see, you know, from a business perspective um, in the service provider or, or carrier market. And we'll talk a little bit about, you know, uh, what, what Radware is doing in terms of technology to address uh, those opportunities. So, um, again, uh, Radware, there's a couple a couple different companies here that start with RAD. I don't know if everyone's familiar with RADWARE. Um, we had a couple people wander over looking for one of the other companies. So just real quick as a backdrop, um, we, uh, we kind of play in the same sandbox as F5. So a lot of what Bart was talking about in terms of application delivery controllers, uh, we have very similar products. We also do cybersecurity. So those are the two main components of our business. Um, we just see ourselves as a leader in, in network security. We sell to not only enterprises across the globe, but also tier one telcos, uh, cable companies, and cloud providers. Um, so just as, uh, in, in terms of enterprise, you know, multiple vertical markets, many um, stock exchanges, many uh, companies in the banking industry as well. So just, uh, just a backdrop um, for everybody. And so my presentation's kind of split into two. I wanted to try to devote equal time to uh, both NFV and SDN. And so for NFV, I'll kind of talk about, um, you know, what application delivery controllers do today in terms of, you know, big iron implementations. <clears throat> and then what are some of the uh, issues with that uh, going forward and how the future mode of operation could really improve the outlook for carriers. And then regarding um, SDN, we'll talk about um, some of the new security threats uh, or vectors and um, specifically what we can do in terms of SDN to, uh, to come up with a better sec uh, security solution at a network level rather than a box level. And then finally, these two things together, these two great technologies together, um, kind of uh, uh, are what we call, uh, you know, a, a killer opportunity or a killer application, and I'll, and I'll get into that a little bit later. So in terms of, um, you know, what are some of the drivers for carrier networking going forward? Um, I just want to ground everyone with how we at Radware look at these technologies and what we're doing about them. Um, the first thing would be software-defined networking. And so obviously, you know, software-defined networking, as everyone at the conference is talking about, is about adding more network level coordination, correlation, and automation. And so that's particularly important for Radware when we talk about security. Um, looking at security uh, across the network with different inputs, whether it's NetFlow, whether it's OpenFlow, whether it's, um, you know, a third party, attack detection device, taking all those inputs and then trying to determine what the best decision would be in the network to divert flows and to address and mitigate the threat. So SDN is very important when it comes to that. Uh, we think there's a lot of innovation in that area. And then NFV um, is a way to cloudify, I guess, um, you know, the network uh, to get more agility. And we think that um, that really results in more of, uh, you know, an open, uh, ecosystem, more choices, more innovation. We think it's good for vendors. We think it's good for our customers. We think it's ultimately good for the end consumer. And so um, enabling that shift with our products so they're NFV capable allows an IT organization or a CSO department within an operator to really make that ship shift from a hardware shop to more of a DevOps IT type organization. So we think that's really important as well. And then open source, um, open source back to providing more choice, uh, giving flexibility for those DevOps engineers to develop new applications, um, really expanding the, um, the ecosystem in terms of choices, um, you know, that uh, rather than having closed systems um, of private vendors, uh, we think that's an important thing. So, so all these things form kind of a confluence of new technologies that are happening right now. And the question is, how do we get there? Um, you know, what's, what's the way to look at some of the, the low-hanging fruit to get some easy wins 
uh, for the operators. Because if you're an operator, um, you're probably serving enterprise customers. And if you're serving enterprise customers, you're getting revenue from those customers. And so rather than trying to boil the ocean, uh, what's the best way to kind of implement NFV and SDN together? And so um, here's a survey that is dated a little bit, um, but I think it's still very relevant. It's from uh, Heavy Reading, and we did a webinar with them uh, a few months ago. And it just talks about, you know, in terms of virtualization, there's a lot of different things you could virtualize, depending on what kind of network you have. Um, what are some of the priorities that people are telling us in terms of functions they want to virtualize within the next couple of years? So this would span out to, you know, the, uh, the 2014 and the balance of 2015 going into next year. And although um, application delivery controllers is not specifically called out, it's part of really what we identify as the first item here, which is basic network services. And if you look at basic network services, um, it, you know, over 66% of the respondents are saying that those are functions, um, you know, that includes firewalls, DNS servers, um, uh, you know, and so forth that are very likely to be, to be virtualized um, in the near term. And so um, these are some of the areas that we feel are kind of, you know, easy to uh, approach, very achievable to implement, and kind of self-contained. Uh, particularly ADCs, virtualizing ADCs has a lot of benefits. Uh, we think it's well suited for virtualization in terms of trying to get scale, trying to get agility. Um, agility is extremely important when you're trying to roll out new services. You know, we, t we were told by one tier one carrier that about 40% of the time it takes for them to roll out a new service is related to the hardware today. So if you have orchestration capabilities in an NFV environment uh, and you can shave weeks off of that time frame, it's faster time to revenue. Um, better customer experience altogether, you know, if you can speed that service rollout, obviously you're gonna uh, be able to please your customers who are waiting on those services to be available from you. And then it allows carriers to be in general more competitive, you know, in the macro economy. Um, carriers today seem to want to have the same type of capabilities as some of the cloud operators, the Amazons, the Googles of the world. And so these are technologies that really will enable them to get there. So um, we did a, a, a survey, uh, a real-time poll in one of our recent webinars. <clears throat> and I'm not gonna do it here, I just wanna kinda show you the results, but it was, you know, if, if you're implementing a virtualized ADC, um, what do you consider, you know, primary drivers? And, and you can see the choices there. Is it, is it about enhanced security? Is it about having better scalability? Is it about um, orchestrating new services? Is it about having more control over policy in your network? And, uh, you know, the top two responses were it's about elastic scale and it's about service orchestration. So that kind of um, justifies for us that, you know, for the, for the carriers, it's, it's really about having that agility it's about having that scale, um, and it's about offering new, new services to their enterprise customers. And so let's look at what that means in, in action. Um, here's a use case. You know, let's discuss kind of present mode of operation for, um, let's say, a load balancer or an ADC. And so this is an example of a DNS server cluster, although this, you know, this could really be anything. If you go back to Bart's presentation, it could be, um, you know, SIP servers, it could be, um, it could be the GI LAN application and mobile. And so, um, you know, this is what I referred to earlier as a, as a big iron solution. So you have a legacy ADC system that, you know, is proprietary, um, much like other big iron equipment in, in networks, you're going to have to find some way to spare equipment. You need advanced replacement. You need to do um, hardware testing uh, with dedicated lab equipment. And so all this combined really means kind of low and slow in terms of doing new feature development, uh, deploying new services. And there's no viable path with most, most of these products to get to NFV um, and SDN solutions in a carrier grade uh, uh, manner. And so um, what we're doing in future mode of operation, we're trying to break this down into um, really addressable uh, 
uh, ways, so two, two different phases for um, customers. And one of them is first take that, um, that uh, large piece of hardware, that large appliance, and replace it with um, an NFV ADC load balancing virtual instance on a server that can run on COTS hardware. And we've done this at Radware uh, with a number of different partners. And so um, with that, we can process um, on a, you know, on a virtualized instance, 160 gig of, of total traffic. And so now we're able to, um, you know, eliminate some of those hidden costs that we had in the PMO scenario. And we're, we're able to support more of a Dev, DevOps type model that I, you know, talked about earlier. And um, the benefit of that is, you know, overall giving the customer more agility, but also reducing CapEx and OpEx in the process. Um, the second phase of that would be kind of um, adding SDN to the picture. So we have a concept called software chassis, which I'm not entirely enamored with. But anyway, that's what we're calling it. And software chassis is now taking um, uh, SDN software application that runs on an open daylight controller with a layer 2 switch and being able to take those uh, virtual instances now and do your dynamic um, you know, uh, workflow management to spin up and, and spin down uh, workloads. And with that now, now you're getting into dynamic scale that's extremely high, up to uh, terabits. And um, this is something that you know, could support real-time usage models. Um, now this gets into reducing the time to deploy new services that 40% of the time that I talked about earlier with the old model. So if you can reduce new service rollout from, you know, six weeks to a couple weeks, just imagine the benefit you can have in terms of revenue and imagine how happy your enterprise customers would be. And so um, that's kind of the concept that um, if you stop by our booth and you're looking for more information on that, um, as far as our ADC goes, that's, you know, that's what we're featuring uh, during the conference. Um, if we shift for a moment to SDN, um, you know, I don't think I need to go through in, in gory detail what the goals of SDN are. We've heard about it for the last few years now. The goals are well documented. But what I wanted to point out that when you look at programmability and agility and you know, being able to central manalyze, centrally manage your infrastructure and have some automation and, and self-healing at the same time, it's really a perfect application for network security. And you know, that's, um, that's good for us because we're in the security business. And we felt like, um, again, back to low-hanging fruit, this was a really easy way to offer up to our customers to implement SDN um, by looking at some of the security challenges that they face. And some of those security challenges, um, and I don't know if I'll get to it, so I want to just put in a plug real quick. We, if you go to radware.com, We've recently put out some new collateral called ebooks, and the ebooks are meant to be interactive pieces that talk about what are the latest trends and security threats. A lot of you have probably heard about DDoS, uh, distributed denial of service. DDoS has been around for years. DDoS, um, in in the past, tended to be just very volumetric. Someone's trying to get a hold of your port. They're trying to take down a server. Um, you know, that evolved to now you have botnets doing that in an automated way from multiple directions. Um, this has really taken a whole new life. It's not, just, uh, uh, it's not just at layer three and four anymore. It's hidden threats that you can't even see, <clears throat> excuse me, at the application layer. So how do you deal with that? How do you find those things? How do you go beyond just kind of rate-based um, detection of threats in the network? to looking at all the different threats you can get from layer one through seven. Um, so ne as networks grow, as networks uh, evolve to SDN and NFV, the security posture that a company needs to take is extremely important and extremely more complicated. And so um, that really means moving from a box level approach, you know, not just looking at a perimeter of a network and trying to sandbag it for volumetric threats, but being able to rationalize threats at a network level and trying to get out of the business of manual mitigation with your security operations team and more into the business of let's have a solution in place that can automatically mitigate threats so that when your security team goes home and they come back in the morning, they can pull up a report and see that 
their, their system, their network, dealt with these automatically and they could focus more on, okay, what are the new things that we could be proactive about going forward because we have a, we, we have a solution in place that's more automated. Um, because the cost of security is high, whether you're an enterprise and you experience an outage, you know, I think the cost of an outage has been, you know, documented to cost, I don't know, half a million dollars. And it could be up to millions, you know, for a whole day if you're an enterprise. If you're a carrier, um, you know, the threats are, and the costs are even more significant because now you're looking at brand uh, reputation being uh, compromised. You're looking at possible security breach. Um, you're looking at, um, you know, you're looking at lawsuits. So it can, it can go on and on. And there's obviously well-documented cases uh, of that in the last few years. And so, again, needing a solution with network-wide control plane to face these threats and to be able to deal with them. And so what we've implemented, um, I think a lot of other vendors have used the term islands of SDN or silos of SDN. So every, you know, just about everybody who's here has tried to come up with a way to, you know, integrate SDN into their solution set. And, um, you know, that's good for, for carriers who have those products because obviously they want to sweat those assets that they have and they want to be able to take those products and move them into an SDN environment um, without having to do forklift upgrades to completely new architecture. And so um, uh, what we've done is we really implemented kind of a top level controller, which is you know, a controller of controllers. And in a security context, what that allows us to do is, is really look at all those different inputs across the network. Again, not at a box level, but um, we could take our software application, which is called Defense Flow, and um, we could take inputs from routers via NetFlow, and we could take influence from us, other SDN controllers via OpenFlow, and we could take input from our own appliance, um, which is called uh, Defense Pro, that might sit uh, on the perimeter of an of enterprise network, or it might sit in a scrubbing center uh, for, um, for a service provider. And now we can kind of correlate you know, using kind of big data and analytic concepts, we can correlate all that data and make the best decision for how to mitigate the attacks in the network. Um, you know, do we take the action of sending um, traffic to a scrubbing center to get cleansed? Um, you know, there's multiple ways you can set programmable policies to deal with those things when the attacks happen. So again, you're not forcing your security operations team to manually take some sort of action, but it's a, a set of rules that you could programmably uh, uh, configure so that the network is um, mitigating attacks on its own and in a self-healing way. And you know, when you couple that with some of the intellectual property that, um, um, that we feel like we offer at uh, Radware, it's a very powerful combination. We're doing something called behavioral-based uh, detection. So, Rather than, you know, on some of those volumetric attacks that I talked about earlier, where you're just looking at rate-based solutions, um, we really have what we think is kind of a better mousetrap than some of the legacy um, uh, DDoS products that have been out there for years. And the reason it's different is because we really create a baseline of what uh, good known traffic is supposed to look like. We have what we call degrees of membership, you know, so we're looking at flows going through the network and we're not only looking at rate, but we're looking at ratio. And we're able to apply uh, real-time signatures and find new threats that come across the network as well as matching them to signatures that we have in our database. And so that combination of, um, you know, and then, and then we do some things to, to test, uh, you know, whether the traffic came from a reliable source. So it's, again, it's not looking just for a port to be overwhelmed by sheer volume, but there's some, um, there's some deeper analytics involved in the algorithm. And um, what that really results in is low false positives of detection and faster time to mitigate uh, those attacks when we see them. And so we, we describe this as um, uh, BDOS is our behavioral denial of service um, engine. And then the SDN application with defense flow that I described earlier is what we've termed as our killer application because it starts with us programming the network to take in various telemetry feeds. And 
um, run those feeds through our behavior uh, ana analytics uh, anomaly factor to look for you know, traffic that doesn't really match the degree of membership that we expect. Um, so it's not just about crossing a threshold in terms of rate, but it's also looking at some of these other um, uh, uh, attributes. And, um, and then um, we characterize that, uh, we share it with all the other met metadata that's available to us in the engine, and then we're able to apply policy automatically, uh, and we're able to distribute that across the network. And I realize this is a very high level uh, discussion and you might ask, well, how exactly do you do that? Um, again, we have demonstrations on that and if you're looking for more detail, um, you know, please let me know and we, we, can, we can get into that. But I, I meant to keep this at a high level because we're covering quite a bit of material in terms of NFP and SDN. Um, so the, you know, the defense flow is, is really the SDN instantiation of a, um, of a security appliance. And uh, the defense flow SDN application can message with uh, not only our own um, detect and mitigation appliance, but also third party devices, as well as getting those other telemetry, telemetry feeds. And that really is what is, is uh, creating uh, some differentiation for, for us in the marketplace. And so when you look at all this together, I talked about load balancing. I talked about load balancing being extended into the NFV environment. I talked about how that gives um, our customers a lot of agility in rolling out new services. It gives them quite a bit of scale up to uh, a terabit of traffic uh, of, of, of ADCs, which would otherwise be extremely expensive in a single big iron appliance. Um, I talked about our security and our anti-DOS capabilities and how we've migrated that to SDN. Um, that maps nicely to what I opened up with, which is you know, how th the new um, confluence of technologies for carriers as we see it is NFV, SDN, and open networking together with you know, cloud type functionality. Um, you know, that's our vision, we're extremely committed to that. Um, we have a lot of activity going on, whether it's some of the Etsy packs or whether it's integration with um, open software or um, working with our partners um, in the network uh, from a security standpoint, from an ADC standpoint. Um, you know, we really feel like we're able to offer a lot of value to customers using these two um, applications as, uh, you know, easy, again, easy wins for the operator to try to implement without being completely overwhelmed by all the different things you can do with NFV and, uh, and SDN. So um, the, this is what I was trying to show you earlier or, or discuss is the eBooks that we've put out. So these are downloadable from our website. Um, again, the one is about trying to define as more of an educational piece, what exactly is a DDoS attack. Half of DDoS, DDoS attacks these days are volumetric and the other half are application. So they're hidden within HTTP or you know, some other means. And, um, you know, there's th that, that, that book is in intended to kind of um, reference third-party studies. It's, it's meant to define um, exactly what these things are and, and explain what some of the tools are to mitigate those. And then the other piece, which we just released today, is about using um, the SDN capabilities uh, in your network security scheme um, to be able to monitor and mitigate uh, attacks with software driven policy and and again that's a lot of what I talked about with our defense flow product so um, I think that's the end of the presentation I appreciate your time today and um, I'll be here the rest of the day and into tomorrow if you have any more questions feel free to stop by the booth